John Robe, Above God's Name channel with Brother Howard. Howard, I want to read a scripture that I love. It's from Jeremiah chapter 9. It's verse 24. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, Amen. that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. He is delegating and dispensing that loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth through his 1611 King James Bible. I love that verse because God does want us to glory. And he's given himself for us to glory in. What a high glory. Amen. And an overflowing glory that is. But uh, I'm afraid that the church today has reduced that down to what letters are behind your name, as in MDiv, PhD, Masters of Theology, right. THM. Those, those, those aren't the letters I think Jesus is talking about when uh, we say, this man knoweth letters. Right. <laughs> those aren't the letters. This is talking about men who walked the walk, hand in hand with God. We're talking about men like Joseph, who was a seer of visions. Men like Daniel, also interpreter of visions. We're talking about men who it's cost them their life spending. I don't even mean martyrdom. I mean daily life spending. They have spent their life on knowing the Lord. Now, of course, in the church, we have the extreme of that because in the church, Christ liveth in his church. And the indwelling Christ is taking the opportunity to walk with God and to glory in this understanding and knowing him to an even higher potential and place. And the video that we're going to talk about right now, I think this is probably the most serious of all the videos that we've done. And this could be, to some, the most challenging for them to watch and to take in. And this video is going to be on a very near deadly fast that you went on in your pursuit to understand and know the Lord. Please tell us about that. Well, as I said earlier, I'd started a couple churches in the second church. I'd gone five years in, and then God tells me, you don't know what a church is. You don't even know what a Bible is or which book is the Bible. He said, go into the wilderness. Can I ask you about that? Yeah. How did you feel when the Lord spoke to your heart and said, you don't even know what a Bible is? Uh, wow. I, I've got to learn. But something in me told me you had to quit. And I told the church that morning, I, I believe God just spoke to me. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to leave. I'm going to have, you can carry on, but I've got to go into the wilderness and seek God's face. And throughout the Bible, you got men like Moses did two 40-day back-to-back fasts. That was no young man either. No, and, and you got uh, Jeremiah, you got uh, Ezekiel, you you got so many people throughout the Bible, and, and Jesus said, when you fast, it's not an if for a Christian, it's part of our routine. John Wesley, it was mandatory that his ministers fast a certain amount each week. If we can say this about America, f food is way too important to Americans. I discovered the fastest way to know God is through a fast. That may sound kind of funny, but that's what, if you want to really know God and want to get involved with his book and have it open to you, go on a fast. Wow. Now, I'm not telling you how long. You let the Holy Ghost tell you how long you should fast. And uh, with me, uh, I had worked at the University of Kentucky as a student chaplain 
It was real. It was a brand new program, so it was a really high, high tech program. We had four professors and three students. That's quite a good ratio. And I learned a lot, especially about death, because we were dealing in a big hospital like that. You're dealing with death every day. We're counseling with families. But when I say we're dealing with death every day, I began to see the signs. I was in a number of autopsies so uh, to experience and how to talk to the family. And when I started seeing these same signs in my body, I said, Lord, what am I going to do? And the Spirit said, you need to fast. Wow. So I thought, I'm going to go on a 15-day fast. And I was kind of a junk food eater at the time. And I'm over 15 days, and then I'm going to go back to my hot dogs and hamburgers and, and cheeseburgers and whatever, and, and uh, diet, di or not diet, but Dr. Pepper. I, that was my favorite drink. Anyway, I, got, uh, I thought, I can make 15 days. I never thought... Hardly any human could ever make 40 days of Jesus. I call that a Jesus fast. But I read this book, Atomic Power with God through fasting. And I can't remember the author's name right now from, I believe, Arizona. And it really spoke to me. So I said, I'm going to go 15 days. I don't know how I'm going to do it. And usually the, in a fast, the first four days are the hardest. After that, at least for me, it got easy and got easier. When I got to 15 days and was going to quit, I felt like I was going up in a high-rise apartment building and 15 floors, and I started seeing the world from a whole different perspective. Wow. That's never changed. And then a, the Spirit spoke to me and said, I want you to go 22 days now. I had no idea. The number 22 popped in my head. That was my basketball number. I don't think it was because of that. But the, but the Lord in high school, the Lord just said, 22 days. So you went 15. He's Im implying to you by order. It's, it's a, implying by order. That's just a gentle way of God saying do it. Is uh, I want you to extend it out to the 22 day mark. That's what he wanted. Right. And, well, that's, and, Isn't that like God? Because right. if you've walked with God seriously you've seriously walked with god you know the things you're going to encounter if you knew those when he called you you wouldn't have come and, and, so, I wouldn't and so you have, went 15 days and, and now you're going the extra mile if he would have told me 22 days originally i would say no i can't do it because I, I i wasn't a faster Amen. and this is cold turkey and i'm doing just on water only no food working at the same time around the place mowing grass different things and uh I was feeling better and better. One thing you save doing a lot of dishes. That's one neat thing about a fast and cooking meals. And uh, so I get to 22 days and I thought, wow, I've made an achievement. I, you know, I was almost proud of myself and that, wait a minute, I'm going to say, we're not done here. God says, now I want you to do a Jesus fast. I want you to go 40 days. Wow. Well, the fact that I made 22 and I'm over the hump, I just, and, and with me, and this happens with other people too, it gets, I've never met anybody that made a 40 day fast. After I did this fast, I, I, I've met several people, especially one that had done five 40 day fasts. It gets easier. And, and, but the most important thing is you start seeing things in the scripture and in the book. It's just like your eyes and your heart. Everything starts opening up, your, your senses. And so uh, going a 40-day fast did not seem that difficult. Well, I've heard that when you, you fast, your body really cleanses itself. Yes. So physically you're being cleansed, and it seems like you're describing a matching spiritual cleansing, able to come to the oh, word absolutely. cleansed to... Not have your own dirt right. come between you and this here, which is spirit. Now, one of the things when you fast, your tongue, because if your body is toxin, most bodies in America, because of the food we eat, are toxic. And uh, that's where basically I believe your diseases come and your sickness from toxicity in your body. My tongue was getting whiter and whiter and whiter. 
And at 22, God said, go 40 days. So off I go. And uh, it, it seemed like a piece of cake. And I got to 40 days. My tongue was getting whiter. And then what shocked me is the Lord said, go 59 days. That was my age at the time. A lot of uh, health people say fast your age. And so I thought, how in the world can I go 59 days? But I thought, well, I've gone 40. I'm over the hump. That'll be not too hard. I'm going to try it. And this is when people started saying, you're crazy. Relatives, cousins, family, mm -hmm. people that I knew. Are you nuts? Did, did anyone think this man's going to die? Yeah, I thought people thought, I'm going to hurt all my organs. And inside. I had another friend that... Uh, after I did this fast, I coached him on a, I believe it was a 59-day fast, and the doctors, when he, his wife took him to the hospital, and the doctor said, you're going to ruin all your organs. But when they checked him, they were all better than when he'd started. Wow. It's amazing. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm looking at this, and this is when things started to happen, when I was basically in the 59 mode, so to speak, One day I was laying in my bed and a voice spoke to me, get out a notebook and a pen and start taking notes. And for four hours, I, I can't say whether it was the Holy Ghost, it probably was because he's the teacher, but it could have been an angel. For four hours, I was lectured on the Bible. I don't know so much lectured, but... I, I, everybody has questions that they can't answer in the scripture. Yes. And he just went from one to another. For example, the ark. He showed me what the ark represented, type of Christ, the Lord of the whole earth. And he showed me and told me about the ark. He told me about different things that I had problems with theologically or didn't understand. It was just like butter, slicing a hot knife through butter. He was just showing, and he seemed so simple. And they seem so easy to understand once he explained them to me. I said, whoa, how can, how can this be? But uh, I, I keep going back and reminded of those on the Emmaus Road. Did not our hearts burn within us when he opened the scriptures to us? You cannot understand this book unless you're believing in it and unless the Holy Ghost will open it to you. It's a gift. It's, it's an absolute gift. So on I go, and I just keep rolling, and I get to 59. And I thought, surely I'm done now. Back to the hot dogs, hamburgers, and the junk food eating. <laughs> no, no, God said, I don't want you to do that. Isn't it amazing how the old man insists on a checklist? Okay, yeah. I got this done now. I'm yeah, going to go back right, to the hot dogs right, and yeah. hamburgers. Thank and that, right. of course, transitions into so much of how Christians live. Oh, okay, I went to church today. I got that checked off. So yeah. I'm going to go sit in front of a giant TV screen now and watch sports for six or eight hours and waste my life. Right. Yeah. yeah it's amazing how that old man just keeps creeping in. Anyway, I'm, I'm on this thing, and some people told me to contact the newspaper because not many people have done a 59-day fast. I said, no, no, this is a private thing between me and God. God wants us. In fact, I even sometimes don't want to share this, although I wrote a book on it, so it is out there. But uh, because I'm, I'm not tr trying to, the focus is on Christ, what he's doing. He's cleaning up my life. So I, I he, what shocked me is he said, I want you to go do a Moses fast plus four, four days, and your tongue will turn pink, and you'll know it's time to get off the fast. So wow. off we go. If Moses can do it, and I don't know how he did it without water. I was drinking water, but water only. People said, you're going to die. Well, if I die, I go to heaven. I'm happy about that. So because I was dying anyway, remember I saw signs of death, and uh, my things were shutting down, and I recognized being around dying people. I'm dying too now. I've got to face that reality. Mm -hmm. I might die. So you almost had a, 
I've got nothing to lose here, and right. maybe the Lord's doing something unique and special here. Well, when, when he got out and started showing me about the Bible, about the English <laughs> Bible code, about these things we'll talk later, I, I, it just befuddled befug my mind. I just said, wow, mm -hmm. this, 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 so far this has been the most fun experience in my life. Challenging, but I'm learning, I'm growing, and I, 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 it's just like I'm becoming in the bosom of Abraham or just coming so close. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I was sensing what that is, and I was getting an intimate relationship with Jesus. Mm. One morning when I was in the fast, I'm laying in bed. All of a sudden I look up, and there's three of the most beautiful angelic beings, angels, I've ever seen in my life. One actually wow. sat in my office chair there, and one stood next to him, and then one stood by my closet door. Wow. And, and they had, they looked like, uh, Cadillac has that kind of creamy gold look uh, on uh, one of their models, and, uh, and the paint and it has like gold in it, and these, they're, these angels' wings and their bodies were just beautiful like that. They were probably six some feet tall. Uh, they had blonde hair, blue eyes, short hair, very muscular but not like a weightlifter, strong looking, and they had the kindest faces you can imagine. And we just looked back and forth. I looked to the two and I looked to the other one back. They never said a word, but you knew Everything is going well. God is watching you. There's uh, my wife Barbara was in Florida, and some lady, a prophetess, was talking to her, and she says, "I see angels on your property on all the corners," mm -hmm. and three of them appeared in my bedroom. I'd never had an experience like that before. A lot of people, <clears throat> when they're in that near death place, uh, seem to see something right on their way out i think they see spiritual into another yeah. world yeah and it seems that if you come not all but if you come close to death a lot of times that veil between the visible and the invisible right starts to become thinner very very thin yeah that seems, to, and you were certainly in that kind of a physical condition, having fasted right. all those days. I mean, all I can say is God had to have been supernaturally keeping you alive. Oh, absolutely, yes. So you see these angels. How much time went by in their presence? Thirty minutes, because I, I looked at my watch when they showed up, and then they just vanished. After 30 minutes. After 30 minutes. And, and during that time, you said you didn't talk. You're just looking at them. And they're just looking at you. You had like a language that you were communicating, but you weren't speaking. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of a mystery to me. But we I just understand knew. that language. We understood, yeah. I understand that language because there's certain key things I've received from the Lord. And they came through a receiving them via the instruction of that language. Oh, I know. It, I look back and I say, if if everything stops right now, so far it's been worth it. This has been <laughs> exciting. <laughs> this is something. And yet there was more to come. Wow. That was even better. On that, Howard, I don't want to miss a single beat. So I'm going to send us into a part two for this. Okay. You fasted. You went incredible days. You met three angels. You stared at each other for 30 minutes. No one said a word. They vanish. Something greater happens. Oh, yes. We're going to find out what that greater that happens is in a part two to this one. Look forward to that. 